Aloha and welcome to Aquarian Radio at AquarianRadio.com. This is an episode of Enki Speaks, a part of the Aquarian Radio Network. The series is called The Anunnaki and Us, 30 chapters of our history starting 4.5 billion years ago to 311 BCE. I am your host, Janet Kerr Lesson. I am here with my co-host, anthropologist, Dr. Sasha Lesson. And this episode, we share chapter 20, which is called Exodus. Oh, sorry, chapter 28, which is called Exodus, the real story. So here is our co-host, the incredible Dr. Sasha Lesson. Take it away, sweetheart. In 1595 BCE, the Hittites, and these are earthlings who obeyed Adad, who was uh, Enlil's uh, uh, <clears throat> lineage, uh, uh, Thief had won Babylon. They ran over Babylon and they captured Marduk. The Hittites got him. They left him under guard uh, at Hana, which is near the Euphrates. But then, in 1650 BCE, New Kingdom pharaohs who were allied with Marduk, who they regarded called him Ra, uh, came back and they rec- they conquered Egypt. And then Marduk's man, Thothmos I of the new regime, invaded all of Enlilite Sumer, all the way up to the Euphrates, where uh, lived Abraham's uh, kin and their descendants. Thothmos now expected Ninurta, uh, the uh, enforcer for the Enlilites, and the Enlilites to strike back. Uh, Marduk's allies, however, the Kassites, were able to free Marduk when they uh, conquered Babylon. Pharaoh also intensified attacks on the Israelites in in Egypt to stop them from joining their Enlilite kin. His successors ordered the death in their line of a child born of Tai, one of Joseph's daughters. Tai put the babe in a waterproof box of bulrushes, which she floated downstream to Hatshepsut. How do you put that? Hatshepsut. Hatshepsut, <laughs> I can't pronounce it, became Pharaoh. She adopted the boy and called him Moses. She gave him the epithet common in her dynasty with the component MSS, which is Mose, M-O-S-E. Hatshepsut became Pharaoh and Moses grew up an Egyptian prince. He killed an Egyptian overseer he saw who was beating an Israelite. Thothmos IV ordered Moses killed, but Moses fled to the Sinai and there married the daughter of a Midianite priest. In 1450, Pharaoh Amenhotep II dropped Moses' death sentence and Enlil told Moses, Go to Egypt and show the Pharaoh magic. Tell him to let my people go. Amenhotep knew that if he let the Israelites go, they would join the Mitanni kinsmen. So instead of letting them go, he ordered they each make three times more bricks per day. Enlil gave, the, uh, gave Egypt plagues, infestations, cattle diseases, darkness, and weather disturbances. He killed all non-Israelite firstborn children and cows in Egypt. He killed all the firstborn cows. The firstborn cows. Interesting. (laughs) Pharaoh told the Israelites, go. Then (laughs) (laughs) Then he sent chariots after them. (laughs) Anlil would climate control devices or knowledge of megatides from Nibiru and Perigee swept a path through the Red Sea, then let the sea drown the charioteers. For 40 years, Enlil led Moses and the Israelites through the desert to the edge of the Sinai, and nights he led with a fiery beacon, days with a dark cloud. (laughs) He's still laughing over that one. (laughs) Poor firstborn cows. (laughs) He fed the Israelites and protected them from... Amalekites. 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 Amalekites, yeah. Amalekites. Anlil, what well, these old biblical names are hard to pronounce. Anlil demanded they kill 3,000 of their number who worshipped other Nibirans and kill 23,000 
for sex before they married. What well, that doesn't make sense. He, yeah, they, these are you know, he, these are people that uh, got uh, uh, Israelites who had sex with each other before they were formally married. You know, like our young oh, po- folks okay. today. Oh, okay. So they, they got and so, killed. So, yeah. And so Ann Lowe was on a, on a trip about it. And he, he, he was, you know, Tellinger actually documents how many people he killed in each of these episodes. And he killed a lot of people. He was not respectful he of life. That, and no, don't you disobey me. Wow. A comet from the beer is passing hit Earth, disintegrated and made the day last 20 hours as Joshua and the Israelites attacked the Canaanites near Beth Horon and delayed sunrise for 20 hours at Teotihuacan Teotihuacan in the Andes. Teotihuacan. Oh, no, it's Te- Oh, yeah, I see what that is. Uh, okay. Teotihuacan. It was it actually, it was, it was Tiwanaku, not Teotihuacan. Uh, not Teotihuacan. No, Teotihuacan wasn't settled yet. Okay, okay so, so so anyway. So wait, let's go over that. Okay, so, so there's they, this comet, and it's it affects the rotation of the Earth so drastically that uh, and uh, Enlil can tell it's coming, and he tells Joshua, "Hey, you can still go after those guys, and uh, you don't have to let off the attack in fear of an ambush because uh, it's getting dark. Because it isn't going to get dark, go kill him." So Joshua does that, and the uh, at the other side of the world. Uh, uh, it's recorded uh, that uh, that uh, it, it was either in the Andes or, or in the uh, Mexican plateau. I can't remember where, but in one of the, one of those places, actually recorded by the exact date, it was dark for the same amount of time that it shouldn't have been too, because the whole the rotation of the Earth had been, uh, at least that's what Sitchin thinks, had been uh, affected. And isn't this the is this the episode where Joshua? Um Blew the trumpets and blew down no, the wall. No, that's, that's another no, episode. No, he, no, that's when they actually used the the uh, uh, sonar technology that the uh, Anunnaki used to um, uh, move big rocks. Okay, so it's interesting when you revisit all these biblical tales with the knowledge that this is the Anunnaki and this is their war and this is how humanity got sucked into their wars and we're all just and we're still doing it to this day. It, so yeah, so they, he, he had the the tr- he, not only not only the the the, uh, the sonar things that he had the trumpeters doing, but he had the actual equipment that the um, the Anunnaki used to move heavy things that the guy that made Coral uh, Castle in Florida used. It's sonar technology that you, they can make the walls come tumbling down. Might have to go round roundabout and repeat it seven times or something, but. Walls come tumbling down. So okay. anyway, after a bit, Yahweh has Moses climb Mount Sinai and relate demands to the Israelites. At first, Moses told them and just what uh, Enlil, Yahweh, said he wanted. Then Enlil landed his aircraft on the mount itself, and with an amplifier, he told the people what he wanted. They knew they had to say, they, they had to do what he said, or he'd kill them. So, you know, oh yeah, boss, sure. Then Enlil ordered Moses up the mountain, and there he gave him stone tablets with commandments on it. And they're originally 15. Well, they, they took out the one about uh, don't covet your neighbor's sheep. Okay, okay. cool. Okay. <laughs> no, he dropped it. He dropped it. Okay, oh, okay. never mind. Back to, I'll, I'll get serious. Go ahead. Okay, and Enlil also showed Moses how to build a temple with a housing for the tablets, the so-called Ark of Covenant, which was a, and also a talk-to-Enlil commune. Moses' brother Aaron and his priest lineage would, could message Enlil, post questions, and get a yes or no answer with the device. The ark and its stones weighed many, many tons. Uh, and what, ha- what happened is Enlil had Moses hide monoatomic white powder of gold in the ark, and that's what lightened it. When Moses returned to the Israelites, he glowed with radiation from Enlil's shuttlecraft. The tablets that Enlil had made told the Israelites to respect all the, uh, to reject all of the other Nibirian gods. There isn't any god but me. Spend every seventh day worshiping him. Subjugate women and kids. Refrain from murder, adultery, theft, and false witness. They must not crave each other's homes, wives, slaves, and property. A comment from Nibiru's passing. Oh, we already said this one. Um, lasted 20 days. Okay. So, the, anyway, the comet uh, disintegrated made 20 hours. Oh, yeah. So, cross okay, it. cross that one out. Around 1200, Enlil lights King Tiglat Pilisar, <laughs> the first... 
of these names. Of Assyria beat Lebanon and caught Marduk. Migrants and invaders flooded Western Asia, Asia Minor, the Mediterranean coast, and Arabia. Peoples of the sea repulsed in Egypt invaded Canaan. Yahweh, also known as Enlil, chose Saul, then David, to rule in Israel. Adad and Nergal again sent an Assyrian king, Shalmaneser III, with technologically advanced artillery against Marduk's Babylonians. Shalmaneser I, in 1010 BCE, David killed the Ajiji half-breeds in Hebron and made himself king of the Israelites there. He established his identity as Enlil, Yahweh's man. Babylon prepared for Nibiru's return with a ceremony depicting Marduk, their city's god, as the incoming planet Nibiru. Enlil set the Assyrians to control Sumer, Akkad, and the space-related sites Marduk threatened or occupied. When Solomon died, Abraham's descendants split their turf into the kingdoms of Judea in the south, Israel in the north, and until uh, 10... 910 BCE, the, these are the kings, Jehobam, Rehobam, Abijah, Nadad, Basad, Elah, Zimra, and then Amri were the rulers of Israel. Now, Ithbal, who is the king of Tyre, one of the Phoenician islands, gave his daughter Jezebel to Ahab, who was the successor to Amri as king of Israel. And the idea uh, was to create a Phoenician-Israeli alliance. Enlil's agent, a guy named Jehu, purged Ahab's dynasty, and he just ruined the alliance. He, he just killed the alliance with Phoenicia. Jehu made Israel subject to Syria, and Syria dispersed Israel's intelligentsia throughout the Assyrian Empire. Assyrian King Shalmaneser V captured Samara in Israel, and Shalmaneser's successor seized Nippur from the en uh, Enlilites. He allied himself with Marduk and ex exiled the Israelites out of northern Israel. They were gone. And that concludes chapter 28. Uh, we have several books, Anunnaki, Gods No More, Anunnaki... Um, Oh, what's our second book? Anunnaki. Legacy of the Gods. Legacy of the Gods and uh, Dance of the Souls, Pierce the Veil. All available on Amazon.com and our websites, AnkiSpeaks.com, Nimmo.com, AquarianRadio.com, and ExtraterrestrialContact.com. So thank you for joining us. I am your host, Jenna Kara Lesson, and... This is Dr. Sasha Lesson. Thanks for listening. Aloha, love, and blessings.